we are in conversation with Mark Allen, head of design at Jeep. Mark, thanks for talking to AutoCar Professional. Uh, we just drove the Compass. Uh, let's start off by talking about the Compass. When you started off in this project, this, as we learned, is the second generation of the Compass, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what are the three key objectives or three key goals, if one way to call it, that you targeted? Always authenticity, because it's a Jeep. Uh, and that's really to do with the off-road, setting the vehicle up, getting the, the geometry right. Uh, the, the goal of this vehicle was honestly to elevate it, get it to be a more premium. So we've connected it very heavily to our, uh, our Grand Cherokee in, in feel and character. And the other is efficiency. Uh, efficiency is uh, really on-road mileage to the vehicle, aerodynamics, uh, those, are, those are key. But uh, the second one, really getting it connected to a more premium vehicle in our line, the Grand Cherokee, or have the ability to, uh, is, has been has been key. C segment uh, SUV is huge around the world, and it's the one sort of universal. Uh, once you get C right, uh, you can go down or you can go up from there. So it was important to make it with a worldwide uh, mindset. Um, we we put in the ability to to go very low with the vehicle or go very high with the limited and 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 every, everywhere in between. And from a design element, uh, given. Uh Every market has certain uh, nuances, so to speak, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in terms of design preference and all. Yes. In India, uh, what is it uh, that you see? And what are you doing from a design perspective in you know, adding those elements, for example? Well, I'll tell you, from the a design perspective, uh, I'm really not going to alter it too much because it's an American product and it's going to come from America. Uh, just like I want my German car to come from Germany and I want my Italian car from Italy. Uh, but the specific... Uh, features and content of the vehicle, that comes directly from the market. Uh, and that goes into color preferences, uh, wheel size and wheel preferences, the interior, how do you want the interior done? Uh, for instance, a, a warmer market like this, I get, I want a lighter interior to it. Um, I've already heard feedback, maybe we could do the sunroof differently on this vehicle, and that's certainly possible to do. Uh, but the in-market content adjustments come directly from the market. But the design comes from my shop in, in Michigan. And uh, when one looks at the Compass, uh, it, one can really kind of easily relate it to, to it being a family member of the Grand Cherokee. Mm -hmm. There is some, you know, the, the, the design language is similar. Yes. So now, as you take it ahead, uh, how do you plan to you know, uh, take the journey ahead uh, with the, say, another smaller size uh, SUV, for example, for emerging markets? Well, we, we have uh, smaller than, than Compass, we have a Renegade, Renegade that we yeah. offer in other markets. That's honestly something we'll probably look at for this market. Uh, as for the other way, uh, Grand Cherokee will move on and this, this vehicle will probably uh, move that direction as well. Um, but beyond that, I can't really comment on what we're gonna do in the market. We're excited to finally get this established here. And uh, it's a good comment that all, all of the right-hand drive compasses made in the world will come out of the plant in India and then throughout the world. And also, uh, at, at the same time, uh, there's a uh, twin challenge, so to speak. I mean, you have at the same, at one hand, you have to offer a global product. And at the same time, you have to keep in mind the design preferences and certain other factors mm -hmm. which has to be addressed by the design department. Uh, going forward, how do you see this evolution in the automotive industry? Um, you'll, you'll see actually what's going to drive the automotive industry for, for styling next is going to be cer certainly uh, electrification through cars. And I like that because honestly then we can move the powertrain around a little bit. It's not one giant lump, yeah. it's a lot of littler pieces. That That's kind of exciting to finally see that. I haven't, I haven't seen a lot of uh, examples of that yet, but it's coming. Uh, autonomy is also the buzzword at the moment. How's that going to affect me? I don't think immediately. And autonomy is still, most people will say 25 is about the time you'll start to really see autonomous. It's still debated, right? That, yeah. That time yeah. Right? Uh, it's an emerging technology. It's an exciting technology. But really, there's going to be uh, highs and lows coming along the way. So I was coming to that. The two, two of the three or four mega global mega trends. Mm -hmm. uh, autonomous driving and yep. electrification. How much of an, no, are we going to see a, a 
significant departure in the design approach with the evolution of mobility solutions like you know uh, electrification uh, electric vehicles and autonomous vehicles well, you you will you will see definite uh, with with autonomy you will because, see because for example in an autonomous vehicle some may say you, you, you may have a vehicle without a steering wheel at all. Yeah, you, you might know. not have windows. <laughs> Does an autonomous and the seating car, arrangement can be different. Does an example. autonomous car need headlights that project light, right? I don't know. These, these are a lot of, they're, they're interesting questions and they're, they're good to have debates about, um, but we, we just don't know and we'll, we'll figure it out as we go away. But will the, will the vehicle evolve and change in appearance? Absolutely. Right. Um, you'll start to see a rash of concept cars and show cars coming out, exploring all those options. And that's really what concept cars are for, to, to get the right and the wrong answers out. For Jeep, does autonomy make sense? Uh, in some senses, yes. In some senses, no. Uh, do I want it to go drive me a, across the track out here in, in the mud and the water? No, I want to do that myself. I, I think that's that's the fun part. Um, but the, uh, the electric, I think, is, is pretty exciting. The hybrids, I think, right now are sort of a, a bridge to full mm, electricity. Yes, yes. That's my opinion. Uh, I think electric is, is gaining traction every day. Uh, are you already working on concepts you know, which are kind of significantly, uh, talk, talk a significantly different language because they fall in, uh, in uh, elect electric vehicle territory or autonomous vehicle territory? The, the, the quick answer is yes. Of course, we work on concepts and ideas all the time for emerging. Uh, that you probably won't see any of them. They're all behind closed doors because there's lots of debates that need to go on. Um, at some point, we'll probably start to show those ideas publicly, but not, not now. Uh, uh, can you give us a timeline about uh, how, how many years before we actually you know, first see a concept? In, couldn't uh, in any couldn't of those guess. Years? I couldn't even <laughs> guess. <laughs> but, uh, good to talk to you, Mark, and uh, wish good. you all the best and, and uh, exciting times ahead for the automotive industry. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And thank you for coming. Yeah. It's our pleasure and uh, thank you very much for watching this conversation with Mark Allen, Head of Design at Jeep. Hello and welcome to this episode of the Autocar Professional Dialogue. Uh, very soon in the Indian market we are going to see a new SUV uh, called the Compass and it comes uh, from the FCA stable, uh, from the Jeep brand and uh, to tell us more about the strategy behind this and what could be the road uh, going ahead like for FCA, that's Fiat, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles in India. We have with us Kevin Flynn, CEO of FCA India. Kevin, thanks for talking to Autocar Professional. Great to see you and thanks for being here. It's a, a great experience we had at the off-road track here and uh, ideal weather conditions also, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think coming to Goa in the, in the monsoon is, uh, is brave, mm. but of course, uh, with a product like Jeep, yes. uh, you've got every opportunity to Whatever you're going to throw at it, it's going to be uh, bigger than the task. So in a funny kind of a way, although it's sort of a bit difficult with the rain and the, and the humidity, um, it's a perfect environment for us yes. to really showcase yeah. the absolute capability that's been built into the car. Uh, in the track where we drove for about close to half an hour or so, uh, it, I should say that it did its job pretty well. Yes. And uh, certain portions where it did the job better than we expected it to, so, but as I understand, this product, it's a high stake product for you, right? Look, it's a, it's a high stake product, but it's actually a strategic move. You know, this isn't, this isn't a guess, bit of guesswork. This is actually us looking at our global operations and realizing what, what do we want to make of our India operation? What, what can it do on a, on a bigger scale right. for uh, FCA as a whole? So if you look at uh, Compass as a project, um, there's now four plants around the world that's making the car and we're the fourth one to come online. So um, Brazil, um, looking after the South American market, we've got Mexico looking after the North, North American, American mm -hmm. uh, market, China, very, very important market yes. for us now. They've got their own manufacturing and then India has been picked right. and India has been picked for um, a number of good reasons. Number one, we have always made a high quality car here. And um, I think we've always been able to impress our broader organization about the level of quality, uh, low warranty claim on our vehicles. So there was a good basis to work from. Plus, we were so keen to have a strategic drive forward in what India could be. What, what can we be in India? 
but we've approached it in a very, very different way. We've taken a global car and worked out the best way to make it in India, but meeting all the exacting global standards. So we're going to be exporting this car to all right-hand drive markets. That would be world. how many markets globally? Well, it, by the time you add up all the small ones and the rest of it, you know, it's going to go uh, very well. All right-hand drive production is coming out of this plant. So a lot of those markets are very, very high discerning, developed. The consumers right. expect a lot of their products. So we flip this whole thing over. Instead of making a car for India and then finding other markets we can export it to, we've got a global car We've manufactured it in India to global standards, right. global integrity, and we're going to export, and we're going to make it available to the Indian consumer. Which is a good strategy, given that it helps you get the economy of scale as well, yes. right from the, you know, the initial period. Uh, but India being a market that we all know how unique and how competitive it is, uh, the price point matters yeah. a lot. I, I agree. And, uh, it, it, so, we understand Pricing is a critical element. So the way we approached the project was to say, where do we want this car to be priced in the Indian market? This is the global standard we must achieve. So if we're going to meet both of those demands, we had to approach the project in a very different way with our suppliers. And that meant us bringing new technologies into the marketplace to be able to even uh, manufacture the car and work with those suppliers. So we're doing laser welding, we're doing back, uh, special vacuum forming, we're doing uh, um, uh, hot pressed uh, steel. So these technologies have never been used in India. So we realized if, if we were going to change this paradigm, right. we had to add ingredients. And we've added those new technologies, we've brought those new systems into play, we've worked with the supplier base, mm. and we're continuing to work. Right. So we're going live with around about 63, 65% localization. That's gonna grow very, very quickly to probably mm. be in the 70s. And we won't rest. So we are pushing the boundaries of the capability of supply and supplying of uh, components right. uh, in India. And that's what's allowed us to make sure we kept an eye tightly on where the price position needs to be, but we were never going to give up on the integrity of that global quality standard. Right. You can take a part from India that we have sourced in India, right. you can get on a plane, you can take it to, Japan, uh, to uh, uh, China, mm. fit it in the car. You can go to Brazil, uh, fit it in the car. You can go to uh, Brazil, uh, to Mexico. Uh, Mexico, fit it in the car. Right. There is one standard to this vehicle, right. And we will make sure that we meet up to all of those expectations and it's been baked into the product from our start-off strategy. I understand. And uh, so, with, which is what I was also uh, thinking that as you introduce the technologies, it comes at a cost. And you are saying you are, you, you are trying to need not necessarily make it, uh, I mean, you're trying to give it a very strong value cost proposition. Yes. Ratio, right? Yes. Mm. Yes. So, to do that, it was critical to bring in some of those new technologies to allow us mm. and yeah that isn't an initial investment mm. but then you start getting the unit cost right. in a in, and particularly with export as well we start right. getting the unit cost in the ballpark that, w that, that we need to have it so mm. it, look it's been a fascinating project right. the the amazing thing here in India is the way the manufacturing team the engineering team and the commercial team have worked so closely together we're all every day close on every element of, of, of putting this package together. So this is the culmination of, um, I think, an amazing amount of teamwork between the, the, the three divisions in the country. And, and it, uh, I would want to say it looks good. Uh, but at the same time, this segment in India, how do you see it evolving? No. Look, I think because SUVs, flavor of the season, that is a good no, I think it's more. I think it's more than flavor of the season. I think that the logic uh, of, of people owning uh, SUVs it just makes sense. If you look at the layout of the vehicle, the, 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 the practical nature, the, you can use it for, for personal transport, you can use it for the family, you can move things. You know, it, the whole it, you sit slightly higher, you've got slightly more uh, robust suspension for, for the kind of terrain that we've got. You can go off road, you can drive through a river, you can drive in the city. That's where we are at home. 
that, that's what we are about. We, we bring a level of credibility to the making of an SUV that nobody else can claim. And all of that DNA is packaged into, into the new compass. So people, I totally understand, on a global basis, the relevance of SUV. But a lot of car companies make SUVs in a shape, shape. not necessarily in the world of capabilities. Capabilities, right. And, and as you launch this in the market, you have to follow it up with, you know, uh, <laughs> I mean, your, your dealerships can't, uh, we need density of models. So yeah, I mean, I said, how, to, I said to somebody, somebody recently, you know, you, a couple get engaged and they get married and, and the first thing you're asking is, what, you know, when are the kids coming? <laughs> you know, let, let's enjoy this period first of all. So we're at launch phase. We're bringing this car to market. We're so excited about it. We're transitioning our dealer network as we speak. We've got some beautiful facilities being set up. We're bringing the Mopar brand to really take care of our after-sales customer care and really lift the, uh, the, the service business into, that, into the level that all of our customers mm. are going to uh, really enjoy. So let's get through this phase. Let's get this car launched. And, uh, and I'm sure the, uh, uh, the rest of the story will come clear. I always say this is the first chapter in a new book, but I'm focusing at the moment on that first chapter. And, and uh, one, would, I, one could fairly guess that the second chapter could be called The Renegade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm focusing on the first chapter and uh, we're in the middle of it now and I'm enjoying it very much indeed. Uh, it's been about close to two and a half years for you. Yes. You are, you are uh, laying the foundation, if one may call it that, uh, for a new phase for FCA uh, in India. We have seen the the history of Fiat and how it has gone. Uh, how do you see it? I mean, at what stage are you in, in building that foundation? Look, there, there's, there, every car company has its plans and works out what are the feasibilities, what are the possibilities, where do we need to be? What, what we're about is, is how do we make our business in India relevant? How do we make our business in India sustainable? And I think we're moving into an era, an era now where we, we've engaged with uh, uh, actively engaged in export. We have set ourselves uh, up for this particular car as the right-hand drive uh, X1. So you know, it is evolving. Mm. There is a bigger story, but we, the critical thing now is, is, is this launch of this new phase in our development in India is done to exacting standards, and that's what we're going to finish, and the rest will come clear in good time. And like the Compass, uh, can we expect uh, future models which you introduce, which you manufacture here, would, uh, would also be exported to other right-hand drive markets? Look, you, you, there's a lot of assumptions in that, yeah. in that questioning, and I understand totally why you're asking it. What we must do right now is focus on Compass, making customers, uh, Compass uh, successful in the marketplace, launch it to exacting standards, and uh, get us with As I say, the rest of that picture will come clear, but we've invested again in India. We really have uh, uh, developed our capabilities in India. We really have developed a, a, a very exciting uh, and, and capable supplier base. So there are, there are a lot of uh, extra foundations that we put in place that will give us a great opportunity moving forward. How many vendors have you have come on board so far? Look, you need to talk to uh, my engineering uh, side of the team yeah. for that. But it, it, there's, there's uh, some existing, some new, some international, some just local. A real, real good spread. But um, this was an a, a important project for us to make sure that we are uh, associated with uh, uh, quality supply. How much of investment has been, has, have been made on this? No, we've made, we, we invested $280 million uh, in the Ranjan Gaon plant to make it Jeep ready. Um, obviously, there's other investments in terms of product mm. and, uh, and, and so forth, but in the plant, we've invested another 280 uh, million um, and uh, we're ready to go. And uh, with the world becoming uh, very uncertain and disruptive at the same time, I have to ask you this question. If, is FCA in India for the long run? Look, that, I mean, I remember my first two years, every interview, is Fiat staying? Was the, was the question. Is Fiat staying? Is Fiat staying? We proved we're staying because we've just made this investment. We've just set up this, uh, as I say, a lot of new technologies. You know, we broadened our supplier base. You don't do that. That, that is our declaration of intent. We've set ourselves up now to export to other right-hand drive markets. That's a declaration of intent. So I, I'm hoping that will you stay in India question 
as soon as people drive the compass, they'll realize that we're actually moved on to another level. You know, I mean, that question is also triggered by another development which recently happened, by an announcement <laughs> sure by one of the big three. <laughs> yeah, we see it. Look, which triggered yeah, that question, so. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, and look, you know, everybody's, this is not an easy marketplace. Mm -hmm. There's not many, probably not another marketplace in the world where, uh, you know, three uh, players can take 70% market share. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, just not known. So, you know, there is always the belief, there is always the uh, hope that this market goes to five million and gives a lot more players more opportunity. Um, and we're here for that. We're here to be part of the scene and to be part of the uh, automotive uh, uh, landscape. I understand, Kevin, that you would like to talk uh, more Compass and Compass alone, but uh, I would also like to understand from the, the Fiat brand, how are you going to kind of you know, revive it and kind of so really we, give that we, we you know, totally, energy? Yeah, push. yeah, yeah. Well, I think we're putting a lot of energy in, and, and this is the end of the day is, a, is a, uh, another brand in, in the FCA stable. Um, we understand current uh, Fiat products are in uh, late life cycle, and, and we have to find a solution for that. And uh, any solution that you find, you've got to make sure it's a sustainable mm. and profitable right. project in its own right. And we'll continue to work on that, and we'll make announcements about that as we feel confident to do so. Our day at the moment, as you rightly said, I know you keep wanting to come back to Compass. Yes, I do, because Compass is just a magnificent achievement. And I think is actually a product that India needs to be proud of. Because this is a made in India car, to global sense, of a brand that's now 75 plus years old. And we're gonna export out of India to other right-hand drive markets around the world. Actually, I think it's something to celebrate. Great. On that note, Kevin, wish you all the best. Thanks and so much. Pleasure to talking to you. Cheers, you too. Thanks. And thank you very much for watching this episode of the Autocar Professional Dialogue. Goodbye.